I was spending up to $10,000 a year just to improve my front yard. And then my mom at the end of the, at the Halloween season is telling me, can you please take it down? And I'm like going, why? It looks great. My name is Kimmy and I am an artist. I create spooky art all year long. I'm known for spooky inspired art and I'm also known for putting on spooky Halloween inspired events all year long. <laughs> art and now events too. <laughs> At the Garden Walk, we pretty much took over like a lot of areas in the Garden Walk Mall. We have a spooky alley, which has a lot of handmade and artists. We have the spooky emporium. Inside there, there's photo ops and there's also shops. They have booths instead of kiosks, so they have a lot more products there. We also have um, a Halloween boutique. advertisement it's just like word of mouth and it's been really successful <laughs> um, so I had this watercolor pumpkin that I never completed so I thought oh I could add some detail some of my first work was watercolor but a lot of like my watercolor pieces that I've done recently are unfinished <laughs> I tend to just go back to the iPad just because it's it's easier and less messy. So every watercolor piece, I, I start with the watercolor and then I go back and add detail with uh, a marker. I don't know how long ago I started it, but I think it was going to be like the 1978 pumpkin from the Michael, from the Halloween movie, Michael Myers. And I just, I never finished it. <laughs> I think I made it look too friendly, the pumpkin. How would you define the word spooky? Spooky. Fun, cute. I think about like pumpkins, bats, things that aren't so scary that anyone can enjoy. I have little ones and they really enjoy all of the, for example, like Disneyland during this time of year. It's really fun. You see pumpkins, you see a lot of things that are related to Halloween, but they're not scary. <laughs> So first of all, the name Spooksy Boo is the name of my main character, but it's become like the name of my brand and it represents spooky cute things. <laughs> so it's a made of word, Spooksy Boo, but if I were to define it, it means spooky cute. So I take the edge off of Halloween. <laughs> and then in here is the shipping department. This is a Spooksy Boo headquarters. shirts, we have prints, everything's nicely organized thanks to our office manager. Little witch ready for summer ween. <laughs> Spooky Slurpee. <laughs> this is my art on fabric. This one's actually one that my friend did. He did the art and I did the pattern. Our office manager labeled everything with the different types of material. We even have this up here which is like a vegan leather. 
A lot of girls use it for handbags. And right over here, this is like the newest one we, we have. So it's a, these are actually classic horror icons, but uh, I made them cute. Ghostface, Pennywise, Jason Kitty, and Michael Myers. All pastel colors. And then over here, these are actually uh, my original characters, but they were stylized by another artist. So that's one thing I like doing too, is collaborating with other artists. Like I appreciate other styles of art, but there's Spooksy Boo and her bat Bartholomew with all their friends. So I wasn't always a fan of Halloween. It comes to a shocker to many. I was kind of like a scaredy cat, to be honest. And when I was in first grade, I remember our teacher showing us the live action film of Frank and Weenie. And I was terrified. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, this is so scary. But I think I was also afraid because she was a very mean teacher. And she had a skeleton, which I overcame my fear in the room. And she would tell us if we would not follow the rules, we would stay inside with the skeleton during recess. <laughs> <laughs> I know teachers wouldn't do that now. I mean, you wouldn't do that to your students, right? Like, <laughs> so that just terrified me. And then um, Halloween time was always just like scary at school, seeing others with like blood and <laughs> because I feel like back then when I was in school, you know, there wasn't really any like rules as far as what you could wear, what was not allowed. During high school is when I started to really um, just fall in love with Tim Burton and his creations. Even in art class, I sat with all the goth kids. <laughs> I was like the odd one out. <laughs> that was their culture and I really liked it. I loved the apparel that they wore, their makeup, but I came to appreciate like their culture and I was just so intrigued by them. And at that point, that's when I started drawing like spooky characters. That's kind of where it started. I just, I love spooky. I love like the innocence of Halloween. You know, the getting to dress up and getting to be weird. I think it's the one holiday that's that celebrates the weird. <laughs> Halloween, I think Halloween is just when the weirdos come out and I'm one of them. <laughs> I would say I'm obsessed with Halloween. I love it so much that I created a business based off of my love for Halloween. My wardrobe is Halloween. You can't tell, got a little bit chat. Is this you 24-7? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Even this like outfit, it's my fabric. Character from Nightmare Before Christmas and we printed it on fabric and my friend made this dress, which I think is super cool. <laughs> I think I know what it is, but I'm not sure. Let's see what it is. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Cause we were talking about how like I'm not horror, but this is definitely horror. The company is called Fathead. These are some like props for our photo op. <laughs> Shout out to Fed <laughs> for sending us these really cool products. Oh my gosh, this one's so cool. We arrived just in time because we're having a virtual event. So we're live streaming and selling some spooky products with other shops for our monster mesh sale happening with Pop Shop. Another commercial. <laughs> That's one fun thing is we get to collaborate with other shops and just like help each other out. These are super cool. I'm obsessed. Um, one thing that I do want to point out too is that we love cosplayers. My name is Mark LeBlanc. I'm a scare actor. <laughs> I have been doing this for quite a while, actually. This is my makeup case. Brushes, alcohol paints, gels, more ears for today. My mouth bloods, sponges, good stuff. Some palettes, prosthetics, big ears. I'm gonna kind of cut them up so it looks like he's been kind of beaten up. Outside of Halloween, the very first time I did a cosplay, which I'm not even sure if it was cosplay at the time, I went to go see Clyde Barker, and I was so infatuated with the movie Hellraiser 
I decided to dress up as the Hellraiser character Pinhead and that kind of started it off. I got uh, great attention from Clive, I got a couple of sign pieces from him and he did a drawing from me that's hanging in above my bedroom. This is kind of cool, this is what got me all started on this. This is my Hellraiser original drawn by Clive Barker. This was me in cosplay, my first cosplay. <laughs> Meeting Clyde Barker. That's probably the coolest piece that I have in my uh, in my collection. Don't know how good this will come out on camera, but did that shake you? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I guess it worked. Today is December twelfth, and there's actually an event at uh, Halloween Depot. Hey, hey, hey! I mean, ho, ho, ho! You better come on down to Halloween Depot. They are doing an event. A couple of cosplayers kind of get out and get together and they have a huge sale for Christmas, so. Only a few more days left to Christmas. Better come down now. That's why I am this character, which I've named Belfie, because I have a character Bumpy, so I'm just adding the B to the Elf. So Belfie the Elf. I started to learn to sew about three years ago. Okay, so the bumpy fans, there's the bumpy outfit. Any excuse to dress up for me is a, a blessing. Chef Wardies, got the ears. He's a mess. <laughs> you don't want to be around Chef Wardy. He's an angry chef. He's kind of based on the uh, chef from The Little Mermaid. Remember that guy that was always yelling and. <laughs> uh, so and that's uh, Casa de Mark. Horror fan. With all my characters, I'm like, what sets you apart from the norm? And I've created the greatest characters just from the teeth, and the teeth actually create my character. These are my bumpy teeth. So if you see regular teeth, then you put bumpy in it. It's a little creepy. <laughs> And every time I put these teeth in, it brings me into that character. I'm like, <laughs> so that's that kind of created the bumpy clown. And this is a character I'm creating, have not revealed yet. This is going to be a rap character. And just by the teeth, it just changes everything. He's going to speak with a list when he starts to talk. Very fine and slippery and succotashy. These are for Belfie the Elf today. These are also my Cenobite teeth. But I think they add a creep factor. Perfect for this. I could be menacing, I could be scary. And then of course you add a little mouth blood to it. But it really gives the full effect of that. Something that I just ate that wasn't too pleasant. Ah! Trade shows that go throughout the year. I will go probably starting in March. Some in California, Midsummer Spree, Monster Palooza, Son of Monster Palooza. Uh, <laughs> my, my clown character, Bumpy, has become very popular, so uh, I have to pretty much show up at him at least one day at these conventions now, so. couple of haunts that uh, I work regular. Uh, one is Reign of Terror, uh, which is a great group out in Thousand Oaks. They have uh, the largest indoor haunt, at least Southern California, I think in all of California. There's Green Spot Farms in Mentone, and they're a, a family-operated farm, and I just love that location. Just being out in the outside, in the farm aspect, it's it just gives it another chill factor than being inside. I've kind of grown from my scaring first from just jumping out at people and, and scaring them. I like to get up and close, get uh, intimate, <laughs> where people <laughs> don't like that at all. It's not going after the people that you know are scared anymore for me. It's the people that aren't scared of me. And if I can try and get that, that fear out of them, that's what I really, really enjoy. Why are you afraid of me? 
Alright, what the hell are you want for Christmas? Don't waste my time. What's not to love about the Halloween season? Ho, 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 go suck my toe. I don't care. What do you want for Christmas? I don't care. Dolls were a thing for me. Uh, those, those are the things that creep me out. Mannequin dolls or the ventriloquist dolls always just creep me out when I was a little kid. Won't be much left to me when I'm done. <laughs> Coming to Christmas near you. <laughs> people that love Halloween year round are definitely my type of people. My name's Raven Tremblay. I happen to be a horror and Halloween enthusiast, also a haunt reviewer for Southern California for a uh, network. Um, I don't discuss the network because, well, they don't pay me to talk about it outside of work. I started at around four or five years old. I was playing with makeup at that time. My mom would wake me up at three and four in the morning just to watch horror films. And uh, like I was watching Vincent Price and all the House of Hammer stuff. I was just going, this is great. I love it. And I end up, you know, just taking it in and becoming more and more enthusiastic about it. Just like going, oh, this is where I need to be. Well, here we are at the Haunted Mansion Nurse hearse known as Spectra. This is what I drive when I go to Walmart for a night on the town. Well, when you do that, you have to do it in a little bit of style. She's got her sleeping arrangements. She's got her decor accessories. As I said, she's got her hitchhiking ghosts. Uh, we got the stretching portraits, Haunted Mansion pulp wallpaper and plaques. In the far back, we got a bat stanchion casket of course yeah I mean it's, it's got its little decor pieces this took me six and a half months to do my next hearse I'm actually planning on building several of them one called uh, the Beetlejuice hearse and then I'm actually doing one for the Lugosi family I'm hoping that in the next few years that I can get it done because well unfortunately Lugosi jr. is getting up there in years and I'd like him to see my work this is my daily driver Seven years. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on building several others. Like, I'm going to be doing a Beetlejuice hearse. This is Haunted Mansion. One after that, I'm building for the Lugosi family and giving it to them after touring it for a year. Did you guys see what we do over at Dee Dee's? We taught all the ducks to um, march up to Dee Dee Ramon's grave to get fed every day. Oh, good. And then uh, he made um, a version of Blitzkrieg Bop with all the ducks from nice. here sampled, and they're the vocals. Nice. We, we play that up at Dee Dee's, and they all know to march up there, like hundreds of them. Nice. Every day there, there's a march of like 50 awesome. to 100 good, ducks march up to Dee Dee's. That, that sounds awesome. Now, there's a car back there, okay. but it was so nice to meet Pleasure you guys. To meet you right. Take care. Thanks, guys. That's what I'm talking about. As I said, when you live this lifestyle, they literally reach out like you've just seen. It is a wonderful feeling. If you don't think you're a part of the family, but you love horror, you're a part of the family. The reason why I'm here, basically I, I have a ritual that I do before shows. I come and enjoy the peace of the cemetery. You come here and it's, it's a little bit more relaxing. At least you're in good company. No one's gonna be yelling at you or complaining. I go to several cemeteries that I enjoy. This is just one of them. Every once in a while, I'll run across like a celebrity grave or something like that while I'm here. It brings back a little bit of nostalgia. Like over there, we happen to have Burt Reynolds on the far side. And the big mausoleum is the legend himself, Rudolph Valentino. I come here, it's, it's a breakaway. It, it's quiet, it's peaceful. You get to see the ducks, you get to enjoy all, all, the, all the little things in life for just a moment. 
It's a ritual I've been doing pretty much since I moved to Hollywood. I came here from Canada years ago and I used to go to the local cemeteries out there, but being the creepy kid in Canada, they throw your butt out. <laughs> here, they, they look at you going, eh, hey, how's it going? So, over the years, it has progressed and um, I definitely can't complain. I blew my allowance going to see horror films. There's one that horror film that is, that is not a horror film, but it is a horror film, which is Jaws. That was one of the ones I seen in the theater and was like going, oh, I love this. People being ripped to shreds. Awesome. I'm the type of guy that roots for the villain. No one ever knows the monster's background. Like Jason Voorhees, misfit child, gets drowned. It was ignored by the camp counselors. Mother gets mad, starts the killing spree. He comes back, he finishes it. You kind of side with him because we've all been there. The villain is always, in some cases, misunderstood. He came from a very psycho background, from his over-loving mother. And then next thing you know, he gets abused and beaten and tossed into the water and killed, killed. And the next thing you know, his mother goes on a killing spree and when she gets killed, he comes back and he finishes the job. You feel for them, it's like, it's a Frankenstein. They call him a murderer, but the father never witnesses him throw her into the water. You're sitting there wondering, where do they make this assumption that he was the murderer just because he looked different? It's like, how can you say that? And, you know, you didn't witness it. It is very therapeutic. You get that, the rat race of the day, and then you get a horror film. It takes that tension where it's all built up, built up, built up, and then you, at the end of the film, it's a release. Now I can go back to the regular world. It's a little bit of schadenfreude where, you know, their day didn't go that well, so my day's got a lot better. I'm sorry? How much is the ticket for the other house? Hmm? Uh, One second. I have no clue. I think that they're, they're over in that corner over there. People think that I'm a part of the event. I can show up to a horror event and people are sitting there taking pictures of me, the car, whatever. And I'm like going, the monsters are over there. There should be a little fright. Years ago, I ended up doing a haunt. It was actually for the head of Universal Studio. He owned most of the bloody neighborhood. So he turned one house into a haunt, like one mansion into a haunt, and he had the one for the guests. They hired me to come in and play a monster. All of a sudden, the head guy from Universal walks up to me and says, my daughters are coming through in a few minutes. I want you to go after them, no holes barred, do whatever it takes. I want them pissing themselves. They wrecked my Mercedes, let them have it. Okay, game on. And I was working with a gentleman by the name of Big Mike. He was dressed as this executioner in this kill. Him. All of a sudden he comes through, five people behind. I literally whip around this hole that's there and there's a giant glass sconce and my head goes right through it. <laughs> and I went, you're mine. And these girls scream and start running. Well, I go after them and I'm ripping down this, this little patchway. They run around this corner and there was a grave with a bunch of zombies in it. And they did not see the grave. And they ran right into it. All of a sudden you hear the zombies going, Ugh! I went, great acting. <laughs> they see that there's zombies in the grave, so they scream yet again, up and out. Literally almost like a Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> they run across the street into the main party house, left the front door open. They would suck in a horror film. So I crash through the doors, it's stung. I'm looking down and I come up and I do the Kubrick. And then I come at him and I went, happy Halloween. Everybody in the room starts laughing and I, and I turn around and walked out. End scene. As I'm walking out the door, I realized I had crashed through a $5,000 set of French doors. They shouldn't have closed the French doors. And I thought, that's it, I'm fired, I'm never working again. The head of Universal walks up to me and he goes, come here. Oh, great. Reaches in his, his pocket, pulls out three grand and goes, here you go. Hit me with three grand right on the spot. I walked into the haunt where Big Mike was, pulled out 1500 for him and went, there you go. It, it's, a, it's a fun gig, it's a fun gig. I, I live for screams. When I, when, I, when I do haunt reviews, one of the main things I'm looking for is what I call the scream factor. I like to savor a hunt. Like when I'm walking through a maze, I walk slow as possible. I wanna take in every scream that's going on around me. It's almost like a drug. It becomes an addiction that I get to feed every year. I savor that like you wouldn't believe. People go through the maze and they're screaming and they're freaking out and all this, and then they get outside and they laugh. 
It's that build up tension and a release. And then they get out, oh, oh yeah, did, I seen you, man. Uh, you were screaming, and, oh, you, man, you were doing it worse than I was. And, you know, it's that whole, you, you get to watch almost a cavalcade of emotions all in one walkthrough. I've been doing this pretty much most of my life. I would decorate my house for Halloween. It started out with like a few foam tombstones and things like that, cobwebs. By the time I was done, I was spending up to $10,000 a year just to improve my front yard. And then my mom at the end of the, at the Halloween season is telling me, can you please take it down? And I'm like going, why? It looks great. My how times have changed. Back in the day, we used to do like physical uh, Halloween decorations. Nowadays, um, I've been able to spend a lot more time indoors working on my decorations. Projection mapping is really where that started. Um, you know, projection mapping has been around for, I want to say probably 15, 20 years, but it hasn't been as popular as it's been popularized the last few years. And a lot of that has just been a few guys that have really started it and gotten really popular on YouTube and so everyone's wanted to do it, but there hasn't been a lot of how-tos. And so for myself, I started about four or five years ago. I used a whole bunch of different applications, but I really didn't delve into Adobe After Effects, which is what this application you see on the screen is, until maybe about two and a half years ago. Part of that was through prodding through Philips Projections. They had posted some tutorials and showed what was possible with it. And uh, so I, you know, I got myself a license. I started playing around with it. And I was just amazed. I usually start my shows early because it's not my day job. So I usually start December, start thinking of what I want to do the year. And my wife actually gave me the idea of doing Ghostbusters. I'm trying to think of like, you know, really good uh, topics um, that have a lot of like assets. I'm always thinking about the assets. Like, what, is there a lot of material out there that I can use for the show? Ghostbusters obviously has a lot of material. So these are my masks. So these are ones that I've used. I've drawn the house essentially. And when I draw the house, you cut it into pieces. And so you create your mass, and that's what this is uh, in, in After Effects. So what areas do I want to block off, or what areas do I want to present? The first step is you draw your house, and that's what these template lines are. I shot a projector at a certain angle, and the big key thing is never to move it. You basically connect your projector to a laptop, which is what I did. You like tracing the lines, really. It's really not very difficult at all. So I, I drew my house, tried to be as detailed as I could. This then feeds all of your masks. And then I decided, well, where am I gonna probably throw a video? And so that's where um, you start creating areas in um, Photoshop where maybe I wanna do something that's gonna be on just the eaves of the house of, a, of the lower eaves, for example, or Maybe I want to do something that's on all the eaves. All I'm doing is I'm going into uh, using this mask. I'm throwing that ha Haunted Mansion wallpaper in After Effects on a layer. And then I say, only show it here. I've easily spent over 100 hours. And I try to line it up. Yeah, so in this box is essentially a projector, a tra radio transmitter, power strip, fan to cool the projector, a media player. So people ask about electrical bills, and that's actually much less than when I had Christmas lights up. So that file I was showing you on the computer that has the, all the lines drawn, I keep the original on here. And so the first thing I'll do when I'm setting up is I'll go to that picture, and I'll essentially play it, and then I'll line up. So you can see, and I always do this, I'm always off by a little on the left. I'll play it a little low so my video, uh, my neighbors aren't there. This is their off day, right? <laughs> Families come in with a lot of little kids, and um, no one's messing around with the pumpkins, which surprised me. Usually I would expect them to be off a little bit, but they fell uh, pretty good. No one's really messing around with them. So this particular scene with, um, with Vigo, I needed about, I'd say, eight to 10 seconds of Ghostbusters shooting. And I was lacking that, so what I did was I cut these small clips from the movie, and then I would extend them, stretch them, reverse them to make it longer without you really noticing the difference, and get that eight to ten seconds I needed. So I did that several times in the video, and it was amazing. I I, I was just like, will this work? And it did. It worked out pretty well. community at least in California is really supportive of each other 
The other part about the horror, haunt, and Halloween communities. You know, people might drive by and see a crowd of, you know, weirdos dressed in black and wearing costumes and blood on their faces. And I mean, nobody on, outside in the outside world usually understands. Um, and they might think it's kind of scary, but everyone is family there. Is it is one big family. We get to interact with others that are into the same kind of things that we are. I've been very lucky that these people have brought me in. There's a huge crowd of people who are obsessed with Halloween. I'm very pleased that um, I can be a part of that community. I would say I'm obsessed with Halloween. The house that I lived in, surprisingly enough, was an old funeral parlor in the town that I lived in. They had turned it into a, a standard house, and all the neighborhood kids would be like, don't go over there. I think Halloween is just when the weirdos come out. And I'm one of them. <laughs> Let's see it.